guys and gals, Insomnia from Blender Tech here. I've decided to create a series that will be long standing, maybe hundreds or thousands of videos, where I go over the creation of procedural materials in Substance Designer for you to use in Unity, Unreal Engine, Substance Painter, Blender, or any other program where you need textures for a material. I won't be getting into how to use Substance Designer. I'll save that for its own series. Rather, I'll be going over just how to create the materials. So to start off, instead of something typical like bricks, let's do something interesting. Water. So, grab some popcorn or open up Substance Designer to follow along. Remember, create your way and let's get to it. In the end, we should end up with something to this effect. So, let's start off as usual by File, New Substance. And let's choose empty. And uh, the stock settings should be fine. We're gonna call this 01 water so that I can keep everything organized. And we're gonna keep it relative to parent. And we will go eight bits per channel and hit okay. So first of all, let's right click in the graph somewhere and let's add a, a node. Let's add an output. This one is going to be our diffuse map. So let's name it diffuse. And then let's go to add item and we obviously want an RGBA diffuse. Let's move on next. We want another output. So let's right click add node output and move this into place. We'll make sure everything's nice and neat. And this one will be our height map. And same deal, we're gonna add an item and it is going to be height and we can move on and similarly we will add a displacement map so uh, we can just copy and paste these if we wanted we can set this one up and so that is height and we'll just call this one disp for displacement of course and we will set it to uh, displacement there you are and we'll come down and we want a bump map so this will be bump, and we'll set that to bump map, if I can find it, bump, 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 there we are. And we'll need a normal map, of course. So I'll make space down here, and we'll set up another one, we'll go normal, and we'll set that to normal. There we are, and we want a specular output. So this one will be a spec. Ooh, I've, went, I've gone and screwed these up now. I got height, bump. Uh, do I have displacement? No, I mixed that up. Okay, so this one is supposed to be bump, normal, displacement. Oh, okay, I guess I just mixed up the order. No problem. This one is going to be a spec or specular, and we will set that thusly to spec. And that is all of the maps that we will be using in this material. Disp. Let's make sure we got all these set up right. Bump. Kind of hard to see. Maybe put some more room between them. Um, but we'll see. So let's start off with our diffuse map. So let's start, give ourselves lots of room. And since everything's procedural, you're always going to want lots of room in your graph. So let's start up here somewhere. And we are going to, um, we're going to want to start with a generator. So let's go and find our generators. And I believe it's under noises. Yes, we want cells one. So let's drag and drop that into here. We'll get ourselves a nice instance at uh, 256 by 256. And let's bump up the distance a little bit. Uh, Somewhere around 25, I would say, would probably look all right. And then after that, we're going to want to move on and add a levels node. And we're going to want to connect the input to the input. And in the levels node, and we want to invert them. And you can do that by going to values and then just uh, simply switch out level out low to one and level out high to zero and that will invert them. And go back to the histogram, you can see the black and white are now reversed. Moving on, we want to add a transformation 2D node. 
and we can plug those together. We can... And I'm actually gonna set up, uh, I'm gonna set this up so we have a bit more room to work. So I'll make that, that a little smaller, that a little smaller. Move this toolbar over a bit. We can come up here quite a bit. And I'm gonna make the properties a, a bit smaller. And I'm gonna turn on the node toolbar too. Um, it's pretty handy, so. So we're gonna want to add a directional warp next. So we'll drag that sucker right in. And the first uh, regular input comes from our transformation 2D. And before we go any further, I realized I've forgotten something in the transformation 2D node. Let's hit the matrix button and we want to scale it um, in both the X and a Y direction. So we can do that very, very quickly with the trans transform matrix. So let's go about five times in the X and 10 times in the Y. Uh, that might be a little bit. Let's go nine and four. Four and eight to power two. That should look all right. Even a little bit less maybe. Three and let's go six. And in our directional warp node, let's add uh, 45 degrees of uh, warp angle and the stock intensity is fine. Let's move on and add a blend node. And this is gonna be our foreground. Let's keep this organized somewhat. Um, so yeah, that will be our foreground. But now let's start setting up our watercolor. So um, we are gonna first want a gradient map. Where are you right there? Oh, oh that's dynamic. I want just a regular gradient map. There we are. And that will um, come from the output of our uh, blend. And in our gradient map, we'll set up our colors. Let's go to the gradient editor and let's click in the color bar up here to add our black and white gradient. And let's make sure we have the first dot selected and let's move it into the blue range. A lighter blue, I would, I would imagine somewhere around uh, yeah 200 or so and it's going to be fairly low um saturation so i'm going to say somewhere around there it could even be a little bit darker so we could tweak the value down a bit yeah kind of a nice dark desaturated blue and on the other side, it's going to be very similar, but it's going to be lighter. So let's go back to around the 200 value for hue. And we will make it around the same value. So somewhere, somewhere around here, but we want the value up quite a bit more. Kind of a nice gradient. Not too extreme though, maybe a little bit less than that. So somewhere in there, it's kind of, you know, a dark to um, um, light blue gradient as you would expect from ocean water. And that should do us just fine. We want a hue saturation light nude and we want to plug it into, uh, we want its input from the gray maps output of course. Actually, I would be using that to drive some values, um, a function. So let's actually just get rid of that. And um, we will instead go straight to an emboss node. And the input will come from the output, obviously. I'm gonna drag it down a little bit to make everything uh, nice and clean. And in the emboss node, I believe we should be okay um, and stock stock levels and we'll come back to this uh, later with other outputs actually it's uh, its intensity input can come straight from the blend so that creates that effect there however let's turn the intensity down to about a 3 2.5 maybe and let's give it a 90 degree turn let's add a, another um regular warp node with that as the input 
and its intensity um, or gradient input can come from the blend as well. And then that will go straight to our, whoa, didn't mean to make a comment, straight to our diffuse output. There we are. And by double clicking, you can get a preview of that. So uh, let's move on to our uh, height value next. We'll go and we'll set up the next generator. So the first one used the cell setup. So let's move down from there just a little bit. And we want vertical noise, noises, vertical. I'm just going to search for it. Ver vertical noise. There you are. We'll drag you in as our generator instance for its uh, setup. It'll be just fine on its own. Of course, we can drive this disorder by a function also, um, like something like time. Um, to create uh, an effect when actually used as a material, but we won't do that for now, so we are going to uh, remove that. So anyways, let's move on. So we want a transform 2D up next. And plug those two in. And it's also going to go down to a second transform 2D. So just copy that one directly so it's wired straight in. And then we want a blend node. And the foreground is this one and the background is that one. In the first transform 2D, let's go into our matrix again. And we want to basically uh, get it rotated. So let's set this to like negative 0 decimal 1 oh that's too much maybe negative 0 decimal 0 1 and that's not quite what I wanted so I just undid that so back to the transform 2d node uh, we're gonna go back into the matrix and oh sorry back into the matrix let's uh, do this manually I basically want it rotated just over like so um, that looks a lot better now and this transform 2d it is a lot easier we just need to flip it the same as before so zero and negative one and one and zero there we are so that gives us a nice blend between the two we want a gradient map again and let's plug that in we don't need to do anything because that will just turn the grayscale into color so we'll just leave it alone next we want a tile a make it tile patch and color to color just like so however we don't want it anywhere near that size um the mask size is fine let's turn the precision down pretty far um, the warping, it can go up just a hair. And the pattern size width can go up a bit. Uh, let's go about, whoa. let's go about, oh, I don't know, 275. And we want the same one for the height, so it's even, so 275. And the disorder, let's, let's plug that up fairly high. And uh, the size variation is fine. The octave, let's turn that down a lot to about one. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So next, uh, we need a grayscale conversion to work with the input here. So um, for that, obviously, we just drag in our friend the grayscale converter and plug our color input. Whoa our color input to uh, the color input and we now get grayscale output. So now I'm going to actually reorganize this a bit. I'm going to move these over here. I'm going to bring the diffuse up. I'm going to bring our setup here back and uh, we're going to plug this output into our directional warp intensity input as well as into the blend background, like so. 
So now to get the rest of our maps, we're going to work off of the blend. Now comes into play though our blend uh, node. We want to turn the opacity down so it's not so much of the cells, but it's not totally the, um, the what the heck do you call it, the vertical noise. I thought it was horizontal because I flipped it. Um, we want it mostly the vertical noise though with a little bit of the cells in there. So a f pretty darn low value. I'd say somewhere, yeah, about 0 0.10, 0 0.15, somewhere in there should should do all right. We want another levels node. Needs that needs to be a little bit darker. So let's put in the level node and plug it in and let's go to our values and level in low let's go about a quarter and in high is fine yeah i like that that looks pretty good i'm just going back and thinking that's just gonna have a little bit we're gonna want to put that down just a little bit so that we get a little bit of blurriness between the two directions maybe 0 0.9 and then make it tile um Put the precision down, get a little bit blurrier, and yeah, that'll work. So, uh, from our levels output, we can search for a height map frequency, a uh, height map frequencies mapper, and that will do most of the work for us. We don't want that much, or sorry, we don't want that little relief, we want that fairly high, somewhere about a, I'd say a 25. And building off of that, we want a normal, whoa. I'm thinking of a totally different node. We just need a simple normal. And we just want to plug in the relief parallax into that and we'll drag it down and it should be fine with default settings. Then we want uh, levels again, and we'll plug that into there. However, this time uh, we need to play with the values. We want no low, we want all high. Um, however, out low we want all the way down, all the way up to one, sorry, in the uh, lows output. And it's not quite as um, intense as I want. Maybe up the intensity a little bit. Go to about a three. And that plugs right into our normal mass. So we'll put that in a line. So there is our normal map. We're going to get stuck here. So we need to drag some stuff down. Perfect. Working off of the height map frequencies, uh, we can get quite a bit of information uh, or frequent, I, I don't even, the uh, frequencies mapper, sorry, not enough coffee yet. We can get quite a bit of information directly out of it if we bring our bump and displacement over. There they are. We'll drag them up above our normal. Uh, and we can just plug the relief parallax straight into there. And that will give us our bump map and our displacement map. Sorry, never mind. I, uh, that should come from the displacement. But I'm totally screwing these up. Flip them around. <laughs> the, dis the displacement. No, I got the bump again. The <laughs> I'm doing it again. The displacement should come from the displacement, whereas the relief parallax can uh, be plugged right into the bump map. Okay, now I'm thinking that's looking a lot. Yes, okay, that's looking more normal. And we can also bring in our height map. This one, yep, perfect. Let's bring it up. And it can come straight from levels back here. So we'll plug that sucker right in. Alrighty. Um, moving on to specular. Do, 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 do. Where are you? There you are, specular. Where'd you go? There'd you go. So for the specular, uh, pretty fast. We can just come off of the um, 
levels and we want ambient occlusion drag one of those in and plug it right up and our ambient occlusion um the spreading we want to turn up a little bit more but let's go about 0 0.3 we want to play with the values a little bit so let's just drag the mids down a little bit and the highs down a little bit uh, maybe not quite so much so let's go maybe 0 0.8 on the highs and 0 0.4 on the mids and the equalizer the lower frequencies and then you can bump down a little bit so let's go about negative zero decimal one or so the middle frequencies we want those kept so you can leave it stock or bump it up so let's go yeah about 0 0.5 and the high frequencies we want I'm going to tone those down just a hair. So yeah, about negative 0 decimal 0 0.05 or so will work. And let's add a levels node after that. And we'll go to our values. All we want to do is just take the, uh, the, the lows output and bump it up to about 0 0.5. So not much difference, but... Um, it's a specular map, so water obviously is very specular, but it needs some variance in it. So that can go straight into our spec map, like so. That should work. Alrighty. That is, I believe, it for a simple water setup. So we have that, and that, and that, and that, and that, and that. Let's give it a preview. So if we right click on our graph name and view outputs in 3D view, we get that look. So there we have it. And we could change the geometry to our inner box and hey, we got pretty close to uh, the original. However, I believe the, I think the normal got, or height, got a little bit too heavy we go to the levels here and take the levels out high leave yeah bump them down to about 0 0.8 levels out low Let's equalize that well we can leave those but levels in low bring that up to about 0 0.3 levels in high Bring that to about 0 0.8 and levels in mid. You know, a little bit less than that. Let's go. 0 0.045. Let's leave our level in high as it is actually. And let's take our lows. Yeah, you can see the effect it's having in the 3D preview. I believe I want. A little more like that, and we want darker overall. Maybe I was about right where I had it. Yeah, I think so. It would be most likely a height or bump output then. Uh, I would take some playing around with, but that is the basic setup for water. It could also come from the cells setup. Um, right here the emboss possibly too much intensity yeah that's where it is tune the intensity down maybe leave it at stock one and the warp intensity instead of leaving it at one we want that quite a bit lower like very low we want a little bit of that of that warpage but not totally right so that it just kind of blends in smoothly so we're looking at about 0 0.05 0 0.1 uh, one there, so we'll 0 0.1 there, that looks a lot better. So there we have it, that is a water. Not a typical material, but that is water nonetheless, and you could use that uh, in Painter, or you could output it for a scene. So I will do a more standard material next time, and one more complex, but that is a water. Um, so yeah, if you guys ever want any of these materials, I will most definitely post them for use. 
but I'm going to leave this one off here. I'm uh, just kind of testing the waters, so to speak. If you guys want to see lots more materials made in Substance Designer, I will, uh, I will go all day long making all sorts of different materials. And I will, like I said, I literally will put out hundreds of videos. So, anyways, thanks for watching from the team here at Blender Tech slash Unreal Tech. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please like and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. As well, we also take donations. If you look in the description, we're on social media on the links on your screen. If you dislike this video for some reason, please tell us why so we can continually improve based on your community input. We also take requests, so we'll see you next time. Remember.